published, 2029 EDT, the 10th of April 2018, updated, 915 EDT, the 11th of April 2018 Theresa May is resisting a rush to bomb Syria without seeing more evidence President Bashar al-Assad is to blame for a barbaric chemical attack on civilians. The Prime Minister told Donald Trump last night she backed an international response to the attack and would work with allies to find out what happened. But the Downing Street account of the call with the US president said an attack should only go ahead of Syrian culpability is confirmed. A White House report of the call did not make the same point. In an incendiary tweet today Mr. Trump warned Russia to get ready because American cruise missiles will be coming. Alarmed British MPs were critical of Mr. Trump's tone but advocates of striking back at Assad over the gas attack said it proved the value of British involvement. Mrs. May is under growing pressure to call a Commons vote before joining any military alliance against Syria, in line with conventions established since the Iraq War. Mail Online understands MPs have not yet received calls from whips to find out if they could return to Westminster before Monday's next scheduled sitting. Theresa May was last night warned not to press ahead with a strike on Bashar al-Assad's troops without a Commons vote. MPs said it would be a huge mistake for the PM to bow to pressure from the US and intervene in the Syrian conflict without their backing the PM held talks. With Emmanuel Macron and Donald Trump on the phone yesterday amid growing speculation that a Western coalition is being put together to strike back at Assad for the chemical attack in an incendiary tweet today Mr. Trump warned Russia to get ready because cruise missiles will be coming Mrs. May. Mr. Trump and French President Emmanuel Macron agreed yesterday that there would be a retaliation to the attack that has provoked international fury and condemnation. The U.S. president promised a forceful response to the Domo attack and has spoke about options for military intervention. He has appeared to move forward with plans to hit Syrian regime forces, moving resources towards the Middle East, and putting pressure on Britain to join possible action, in his tweet today. Mr. Trump said, Russia vows to shoot down any and all missiles fired at Syria. Get ready, Russia, because they will be coming, nice and new and smart. You shouldn't be partners with a gas killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it! Exclamation mark. Tory MP Johnny Mercer replied, This is the reason why we must build, influence, and yes, lead coalitions. To make a calm but very robust stand for what we believe in whilst tempering unhelpful rhetoric so we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. There is a balance, and therein lies Britain's role in this. Michael Fabricant said, it is not diplomatic. But the final sentence is certainly true. Tory MP Johnny Mercer replied, this is the reason why we must build, influence, and yes, lead coalition ex Michael Fabricant said, it is not diplomatic but the final sentence is certainly true. However, Mrs May indicated she needed proof the Syrian dictator was behind the attack before ordering a strike. Some politicians have claimed Theresa May could order British forces into action in Syria without a Commons vote. Legally, they are correct. The Prime Minister has the power to send troops into battle under the royal prerogative. But votes have been held on almost all military action by British forces since the Iraq War in 2003, establishing what many see as a firm convention. Forces were deployed to support the French in Mali in 2013 without a vote, and David Cameron ordered a drone strike on ISIS in Syria in 2015 without giving MPs advance notice. But MPs voted against military action against the Assad regime in 2013. Meaning Mrs. May will be under acute pressure to call a vote to join any strikes. She said the attack was another example of the Assad regime's brutality but added the caveat if confirmed apostrophe. She said President Assad and Russia would be held to account. If they are found to be responsible for the attack which left at least 40 people, including children, dead, MPs have approved air strikes on Islamic State in Syria but not on Russian backed regime forces. In 2013, the Commons voted against bombing Assad over chemical weapon strikes by a majority of 13. 
A repeat of the defeat in the Commons lobby would be humiliating for Mrs May but she may be advised it is politically impossible to ignore the 2013 vote either. Since the Iraq war a precedent has been set that all military action abroad is first approved by Parliament, but it has not always been followed. If they are not recalled early, MPs are due to be back in Westminster following the Easter recess on Monday afternoon. Despite many MPs and ministers backing the PM to act without a vote, others warned doing so could trigger a row. Mrs May indicated she needed proof the Syrian dictator was behind the attack before ordering a strike. She said the attack was another example of the Assad regime's brutality but added the caveat if confirmed Britain has a variety of military options it could bring to any action against President Assad's regime in Syria but it appears Mrs May might be resigned to taking responsibility along with her cabinet rather than waiting for MPs to return from the Easter recess. General Sir Richard Barons, Commander Joint Forces Command from April 2013 until April 2016 today warned any strikes on Syria needed to be at scale, with allies and if necessary repeated until conditions change apostrophe. He told BBC Radio 4's Today programme. Well I think the likely outcome is that action will be taken because it must be taken. I hope but I can't be sure of course that this extends beyond the tokenism of previous attempts which have been in active event management and limited by scale and by time. Asked if any joint action could take out Syria's chemical weapons capability, General Sir Richard said, the capability exists given enough time and effort to identify where the chemical weapons stocks are and the delivery means, which are mostly aircraft, and then over time to begin to strike at them from range and that I guess is what's under consideration. And you're not going to do that completely but you are going to make a difference over time. Asked if this could be done in a way that would avoid hitting Russian aircraft in Syrian air bases, he replied. In terms of the technology of precision targeting, yes that can be done, but the chances of, if you like, collateral damage are very high. A former head of the army said diplomatic efforts must continue alongside any action over the suspected chemical weapon attack in Syria. It's got to be within the overall context of a bigger diplomatic effort to get the parties around the table to end the Syria civil war, Lord Dannett told ITV's Good Morning Britain. A strike on its own would just be a strike and potentially nothing else. As decisions on deploying armed forces come under a royal prerogative, she does not technically have to seek Parliament's permission before ordering air strikes. While there is a precedent to gain the support of the fellow MPs before taking such drastic action, the move spectacularly backfired on David Cameron in 2013. It comes as the Daily Telegraph reports Boris Johnson is among those influential MPs to believe Mrs. May can act without her MPs to support the backing of Trump and Macron in attacking Assad's forces. Commons Defence Committee Chairman Julian Lewis, who did not back action against Assad in 2013, told Mail Online. When we are contemplating military intervention in other people's conflicts, Parliament ought to be consulted. And his fellow Tory MP John Barron said any substantial military commitment should be approved by Parliament. Former Lib Dem leader Tim Farron said, There is a strong case for military action in Syria. We cannot continue to shrug our shoulders as Assad commits despicable crimes against the innocent. But Theresa May would be making a huge mistake if she decides to follow Donald Trump and commit our country to action without consulting our sovereign parliament first. Labour MP Chris Bryant, who sits on the Commons Foreign Affairs Committee, said it would be bizarre to go ahead with strikes without M.P.S backing, especially since the last two times we looked at this it proved to be highly contentious across all parties. K. Hutchison, U.S. permanent representative to NATO, told Sky News yesterday that Assad ally Russia should do something to stop this kind of genocide. Though Mr. Trump said on Monday that major decisions would be made in the following 24 to 48 hours. Mr. Macron said yesterday that France would take the coming days to decide with the US and Britain how to respond. Other MPs said there did not need to be a vote for what would be a limited one-off strike in response to a chemical attack.
Despite many MPs and ministers backing the PM to act without a vote, others warned doing so could trigger a row. But it appears Mrs May might be resigned to taking responsibility along with her cabinet, rather than waiting for MPs to return from the East to recess former aid minister Preeti Patel said, inaction has become a stain on our collective humanity. We have reached the moment when the world must see justice done. Tory MP Tom Dugant Hat who chairs the Foreign Affairs Committee, said that UN and Geneva Protocols gave the government the authority to act without a vote. Aid Minister Penny Mordaunt said discussions were ongoing over a possible military response by Britain and its allies that would prevent repeats. Apostrophe. Yesterday the Mail revealed military chiefs had been instructed to draw up options for a UK strike on Assad's forces. The PM chaired a National Security Council meeting, attended by the head of the military. Air Chief Marshal Sir Stuart Peach, during which the Syria crisis was discussed. However, no decision has yet been made on what the British response should be. The International Chemical Weapons Watchdog said its team was preparing to send a team on a fact finding mission to Doma, on the outskirts of Damascus. Meanwhile, Mikhail Gorbachev expressed great concern over the mounting tensions in Syria. The ex-Soviet president warned Russia and the US were on the verge of a confrontation. It came as Russia vetoed a United Nations resolution to create an expert body to determine responsibility for the Syria chemical weapons attacks. Eastern Ghouta is one of the last major areas held by rebels fighting the regime of President Bashar al-Assad. The area, on the outskirts of the Syrian capital Damascus had been designated a de-escalation zone by Russia and Iran, the government's main allies, in an agreement along with Turkey, which backs the rebels. But hostilities intensified in mid-November in the densely populated area, which is home to 400,000 people. The latest violence in eastern Ghouta is the worst since 2013 when 1,300 people died after the Assad regime deployed sarin gas. Eastern Ghouta has been devastated by sustained air and artillery attack by the Syrian regime and its Russian ally. The Russian military is again supporting Assad's forces as it did in the all-out assault on the rebel-held half of Syria's largest city, Aleppo in late 2016, which drove the rebels from their enclave there. Five days of airstrikes and intense artillery fire by the regime and Russian ally have killed 403 civilians, including 95 children. The rebels East and Ghouta are dominated by the Islamist faction Jaysh al-Islam and Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, a jihadist alliance led by al-Qaeda's former affiliate in Syria, also operates there. They have also fired rockets and mortar rounds on civilian areas in the capital, which is under government control, killing at least 16, as the area has come under attack. According to regime media, President Assad is preparing for a final push on the enclave and securing government areas around the capital would represent a significant victory.